When people talk about Star Wars Episode 1, they usually just want to talk shit. People bash Episode 1 as if it is just this absolute turd, a moldy turd. I don't get that. I don't understand. I guess it's just where I grew up in that time period. I get the CGI is terrible. I get that the plot holes are there. So on and so Oh, there's no actual main character to this. Like, there's so many badass characters in the movie. Oh, Jar Jar Binks. Sure, I get it. I was a kid, and I can tell you from the perspective of somebody that that film was made for, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was amazing. And I guess it makes me reconsider my positions on a lot of things when I look at it that way, because the fun is to be had by the people who want to have the fun. If it's not your cup of tea, don't drink it. For me, it was. For me, Star Wars Episode One was super cool. I loved Darth Maul, probably because he didn't have to say a bunch of George Lucas's lines, and he was really good at what he did. Uh, Darth Maul was actually, you know, played by somebody who had skills in the martial arts and knew how to use weapons. And you can see that in the battles that he's involved in. But also, I loved Anakin Skywalker. Do you want to know why? Because he was a kid and I was a kid and I could relate to him and all these people. Oh, well, well why didn't he not have a, a big helmet to put on his head when he was in the Starfighter? Why, why did he have a, a helmet that fit his tiny little head? I was not thinking about that and I could care less and still to this day, I could care less. How are these people supposed to use the force? The force isn't real. That doesn't make any sense and you guys are head over heels for that. But the complaints continue and I'm not here for negativity. What I am here for is to explain my excitement in the fact that Star Wars Episode One Racer is now ported over to the Nintendo Switch, which I now have here. The textures are terrible, but it's there and it's nice and it's running on a machine that has the ability to um, emulate the game without any real lag or anything. I mean, as far as I understand, it stays at 60 FPS, which is really awesome. And I can play it on the throne. When I'm sitting there taking a dump, I I I'm good. If I'm laying in my bed, I'm good. If I have a lunch break, I'm good. So I, I really enjoy that. I had um, an emulator on my phone and I was using this uh, USB aftermarket um, N64 controller. It, it, it's going to fall apart. It's a piece of junk. It works, but not the best. And so with the ability to play it on my Switch and the fact that I can bust these bad boys off the sides and play two players, that is so cool. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, could they have redone it from the ground up and, and made it a next-gen graphics game and and put it out there on you know the new systems that are coming out or something sure they could but who's really um who's really going to be pissed off about what we got I, i'm happy that it you know the dust was brushed off of it and they brought the game back i i even have a copy of the 64 version uh, as you can see it's banged up some person named sam made the sad mistake of selling it and now it's in my possession and as if the sticker wasn't enough they also put Star Wars on top just so you would know um, I guess because they had the drawer thing they could look down well whatever but I still play the shit out of this game on the 64 or at least I was until I got it on the switch then come to find out it had been released on Steam as well which I had no idea until I was looking into the reviews of the switch version of the game but man, what what great nostalgic fun. And this is one of those games that I can not invest like large amounts of time into and step away from it, come right back to it, get in the game and play it, and I'm fine. Like I'm not stuck wondering what the hell's going on. I had to go to work and I've been busy for the past month, so I'm back on it again and, and I'm not investigating what the hell I'm even supposed to be doing. I get in my pod racer and I race. I'm so happy, if you can't tell. I just enjoyed episode one so much, like I said, because I was young. I'm sure if as an adult I had to watch it, I'd be, what, what, what is this shit? But nostalgia has its way of getting its hooks in you, and it definitely did. I have a, actually an Anakin Skywalker figure still, uh, you know, unopened. It's in my closet. I can't find it. I put it away. Um, 
but I just love that time in Star Wars and the stuff really more so the marketing for it you know the what was it that they did for fast food chains I can't remember I think it was Burger King had some stuff there was just so much back then that they would do to constantly have a product in your face but that was one that I was glad to be bum rushed by like I was so happy with Star Wars being everywhere and it was great timing because they had released the remastered um, you know a new hope Empire Strikes Back Return of the Jedi had all been re-released in theaters in like 1997 I was like eight years old so it was shortly after that that episode one came out and I was just Star Wars fever so with the game coming back to the switch I get the same kind of feeling of excitement and um, I'm just really really happy that they did that it's so fun to be able to have one of the best portable devices I would say it's a tie for the switch and the Vita for me for handheld uh, games but Star Wars Racer is just one of those games that I'm glad to have on this portable device because like I said it, it's like <laughs> a really deep mini game for me at this point the way that games are you know I love Skyrim I love uh, Fallout, uh, Fallout 4, I'm not so much on Fallout 76, you know, The Witcher, uh, just games that, you know, Persona 5, Persona 4, the games that take a lot of time, you know, Pokemon, but Star Wars Racer is one of those games that if you have 10 or 15 minutes and you just want to run through a race, you pick it up and, and jump into it, but it also has the customization there that gives you the opportunity to put a little bit of time into it and, and go a little bit deeper than just, you know, holding down a button and steering. It's just a great game. It's one of those middle of the road games that you can make it more if you want it to be, but you can just roll through and race if you want to. Uh, I, I don't think there's enough of that anymore. A lot of games that are out now, you got to put a lot of effort and time into. You can't just grab your system, turn it on, and start playing for a few minutes, put it down, come back, or, or you're going to be lost. So this is one of those games that I'm excited to play with my friends. I can't wait to be able to, you know, set up the screen, hand a controller to a friend, and play it. Unfortunately, I haven't got to enjoy that aspect of the game due to social distancing and dealing with COVID, but as soon as I have the opportunity to do that, I'm going to be walking up to strangers and seeing if they want to have a race super fun should be enjoyed by people that you know didn't grow up in the time that I did if you're a younger person and you're questioning is it even worth a shot absolutely worth a shot I mean they did a great job porting it over I don't have any complaints about it on the switch um, it may be weird for you guys to go back and play on uh, the 64 hardware given that the controller is a freak of nature which I enjoy but a lot of people are turned off by and if you're if you're not interested in the game just because of the Star Wars Episode 1 tag, just don't even do that. Just don't even. It, it, it's a fun racing game in general. Even if you're not a Star Wars fan, the fact that you can bump up against stuff and then like one of your motors will explode. And, I mean, there's just, it's its own game and worthy of a shot on its own. So if you have any want or will at all in the slightest oh maybe i should buy this game just go ahead and do it it's pretty cheap i think it's 15 dollars on the switch and it's like 10 dollars on steam and you can get the cartridge if you do have a 64 for i would say 10 15 dollars i've really really enjoyed the opportunity to, to to be inspired to play this game and get back into it had no problem with, with picking it up off the uh, off the store here and you know <laughs> the textures are absolutely terrible if you didn't grow up with this game it may be a little bit difficult for you to get into it because of the way that some of the stuff looks but again you know this game runs great on the system it looks great and I have had a hell of a time playing it again the Game Boy Color game that came out for this, Star Wars Episode One Racer on the Game Boy Color, was hard. It is so hard. And um, 
I forgot about that in researching for this video and just inspiring myself. I wanted to go back and test it out. And I thought, well, you know, why not try and record some of that footage? So I got some of that footage uh, recorded. Just, just take a look for yourself. This game is so damn hard. Off the bat with that just beautiful music, right? Gotta love the Game Boy Color. So here we go, amped, ready to get started. Graphics not too awful. This could be enjoyable. This could be fun. Okay. Oh, what's happening? Oh my. Oh, what is this? The controls are atrocious. This is one of the hardest racing games I've ever played in my life. Like once you move in a direction, like it, it doesn't go back to center. It stays in that direction. So I mean, it's like I, I'm just telling you. It, I, unless you want to torture yourself, I don't see any reason why you would want to play this game. And maybe that's just my opinion, but this is bottom of the barrel trash for me. I don't see any way I could enjoy this. I believe I enjoyed it as a kid. I kind of have fond memories of playing this game. I don't know how. I mean, I felt like I was super hammered trying to control this pod. Not working out for me. Totally sucked in my opinion. I may be a little bit butthurt, but can you blame me? This is such a shitty performance. Oh my god. And it, it just didn't get any easier. I did a couple of races and it just kept being a pain. I could not control this damn thing at all. You don't see what's coming around the corner really. You got that little arrow that kind of helps you, but just the control of the pod is nearly impossible for me. It's awful. <laughs> Star Wars Racer Revenge is another game that came out for PS2 and it's re-released for PS4. Um, you can get it on the PlayStation Market. You can also get it if you have PlayStation Now, I believe. Or should still be on there. It was on there last time I looked. And uh, what a great game as well. Super fun. Uh, the OG game though, it was about as good as it gets. And the fact that they have it ported on the Switch is just that's that's all you need you need to check this one out um they did the game justice i'm super excited about it and that there can be tragedies so i feel like if a game is redone remastered there's one of two ways that that it usually is done they, they just take it and they remaster it from the ground up make a completely new game which you know sometimes that's a success sometimes that works with like uh, the Final Fantasy remaster that just came out. People love it. I've, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I myself have not played it, but I know Nick has thoroughly enjoyed it, and I trust his word um, on it, and I will probably end up getting into it. Uh, the Resident Evil 2 uh, remasters, remakes, whatever you want to call them. People love it. I, I've played it a little bit. I think it's beautiful. I'm not sure 100% how I feel about it yet, but this is one that just gets gets the the game to play on a current system and kind of just steps back and lets it do its thing, which I can appreciate because if it's not broke, don't fix it. And I don't think the game's broken. I think the game is great. There's certain bugs that'll happen. I respawned in the middle of an asteroid one time in the middle of a race. And I mean, you just could, I couldn't blow myself up. I couldn't do anything to escape from it. And that sucked. So I had to just respawn and it cost me the race, obviously, but other than little bitty bugs there wasn't anything wrong with the game to begin with so they kind of cleaned it up a little bit like it's playing on the switch so it's gonna look better but they really didn't change any of the textures but I'm, I'm okay with that because the heart and the soul of the game is intact you get a chance to have that experience it's you can stomach the graphics it's nothing horrendous well I mean it doesn't look that good in certain places but it's a fun game and you should give it a shot in my opinion. I love it. I'm going to continue to play it. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. I can't wait until I have the opportunity to play this with people, uh, with friends. Um, there was no online support added, but then again, that would be something to alter the game. So I understand they didn't put that in there, but what a way to enjoy this game if you could play it with other people. That would be super cool, but I guess this has been a little bit more of a review than I usually do, 
But it, it, it's a game that's recently came out for the Switch, and it's a game that I think people really need to try out if they haven't tried it out. As I said, don't judge it just because it's a Star Wars Episode One game. If you're a Star Wars Episode One hater, I get it, but understand there's some value in Episode One. I would say that Star Wars Episode One Racer is some of that value that came along with Star Wars Episode One. So why not give it a shot? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section if you've played the game in the past or you've tried the switch version if, you, if you're enjoying it if you're a hater of all things star wars episode one and there's no way that you're ever going to play the game you thought the game sucked whatever it may be if you love the game boy color version if you know anything about star wars episode uh, I don't know if it's Episode 1 Racer, but the Revenge game that came out on the PS2 and is on the PS4 Marketplace. If you know much about it, I'm thinking about getting into that game. I've played it just a little bit. Uh, is it worth me picking up? Should I just go ahead and get it? Let me know. If you want to say, Hat Guy, Chad, just screw yourself in the comments, go ahead. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. This has been all fun and games. I had a blast. Thank you guys so much.